Okay, well here I am on top of Bratton Camp, which has uh, Westbury White Horse on the side and looks out into the valley facing sort of towards Chippenham Bath area. As you see there's a red flag flying, but all that area behind the fence you can see at the top there, that's MOD land, that's Salisbury Plain there, and that's how close they come. Now this to me looks like the main enclosure. See it's got a great view. But it would have <laughs> if it wasn't so misty. Okay, well let's go and have a look anyway. That is more of Salisbury Plain over there. And uh, so here we are, a lot of ancient people have walked along here, uh, lived here in fact, and you can see with a view across here you can see any invaders. So quite obviously a lot of old settlements were on the top of hills because it gave you a good vantage point. Completely makes sense doesn't it? As well as maybe having houses on water on stilts because that's also quite safe from any danger and you can usually hear any attackers coming by the sound of the water. Bearing in mind that sound travels huge distances. As you know if you live in a, the bottom of a bowl you can hear sounds of people chatting below even if they're talking quietly. I'm sorry it is so misty. I didn't think I was going to see anything when I was up here because I could only see 20 metres in some places when I was driving. Down in the bottom there, that's Westbury White Cement Works. Westbury Cement Works, I mean. And as we pan round, you can see the view that this place gives you. And there in front of us, some good soil creep that you can see because the sun's just hitting the peaks of it. So as you can see the sides are pretty steep. I mean it is a proper escarpment and no doubt that's all been leveled out by glaciers. Is my guess, I don't know, but it is a U-shaped valley. Well, I've just been insulted. Um, abusively insulted while I've been up here. Someone behind me, well, I heard some, someone saying something, I didn't realise they were talking to me, and then, then I heard them go, fucking weirdo. Uh, that's the first time I've been insulted for a few years actually, but uh, well, well, the subject's been brought up. Uh, it used to be a regular occurrence every time I went out for 30 years. I know what I mean, literally every time I went out. Such is, such is the social control and conditioning for people who refuse to conform. That's right, <laughs> I refuse. So there's the battle taking place there, but look at this, I mean this camp goes right out there. You know that's quite a sizeable camp.
Now this that we're looking at is actually a long barrow. So let's take a, let's take a little walk up there. I've forgotten how massive this place is. And it really is huge. Well, this seems to be aligned east-west, which makes me think that it's an equinoxal barrow. Can you hear the skylarks? Now I guess this is the entrance here because this is wider than the first end. So obviously this is aligned to the east and the rising sun. Hence, you know, being reborn again into another life. And it's quite long, not quite East Kennet length, which is uh, about 100 metres I measured it out to. This is about 50, maybe 40. No, 50. Well, one thing about growing up on the edge of Salisbury Plain, one thing that's not contentious to say is that regularly they'd be doing practicing and um, you know for like all morning or all afternoon or even all day we'd hear massive booms and our windows would shake and rattle and bang their heads but this was a constant thing and in fact even now I live further away than I than I did and um, I still hear the bangings and it still makes things it still can make things rumble so that was kind of something we grew up with the sound of war even though we weren't in a war or in a war zone it sounded like it and the army would come through because we had a massive barracks so there was a kind of a whole load of other things that you know goes into your brain and crossing you know crossing Salisbury Plain quite regularly seeing the red flags uh, you know having my father come back after having been shot at well not shot at but 
he saw mortars and machine gun fire ahead of him in the road, just missing him. One thing I do remember is when, after the bean field, this is where the festival happened, Stonehenge Festival, and I remember coming up here and it was a horrible night, piss with rain the whole night, it was awful. But it did stop at some point and I remember in the morning coming to the White Horse and being offered some whiskey, which was White Horse whiskey, and that was my first drink in the morning, and then me and a few other people walked home because we'd only just come up for the night. Yeah, so post Beanfield, what they call the Battle of the Beanfield, which I don't think there was any battle. I think abusive massacre is the uh, actual proper term. But anyway, that's where the travellers all came after hiding out in Savanac Forest thanks to the Marquis of whatever he was, or Duke of whatever, I can't remember. But, um, but that's an interesting part of the story. Uh, I can't remember his name, but years later he got made bankrupt. And I do wonder if that was something to do with it, because he stopped the police from going on his land, which was Savonac Forest, part of. He owned that and um, he wouldn't let the police on and he, he invited all the travellers back to come and live on his land because he was there and saw the abuse and destruction and uh, he couldn't believe it. So that's why I'm doing this video because it's some recent history that's actually been forgotten, badly forgotten. There are people that don't even know it happened and just like the other day, I, I came across someone who had no idea that Clay Hill was the centre of the Warminster UFO mysteries back in the 1970s. Because people think all these things are like a recent thing. But if you live alongside the Salisbury Plain, you certainly know it's not. Now all these dips in there I'm not quite sure what they all are. They do look like something to do with these earthworks. I know you've heard me mention it before, but can you imagine what this was like when it was first done and it was all white? 